Hey, what's up everybody? Today in this video, I want to talk to you about the five most realistic restricted free agents that the Pistons have a chance at getting. Now, I use the word realistic. I didn't say the five best restricted free agents because I think it also depends on how much are they going to be paid? Is their current team wanting to stay with them? What would it take to pry the player away? I mean, there's a lot of factors that go into this. So I don't want to take a lot of time. Let's jump right into this five most realistic free agents the Pistons can get. And don't turn this video off when you hear number one, but the or but number five, the fifth best or most realistic free agent that we could get is one of our own. It's Marvin Bagley, the third. And like I said, don't turn this off because you're like, no, no, we want other players. Look. I know a lot of people have a love uh, fest with Marvin Bagley. He came into the Pistons, high flying, fun to watch, but he also showed that he's what he's been throughout his career. He just did it a little bit more efficiently here in Detroit. He scores well with his back to the basket. He is a great pick and roll lob threat and he gets injured a lot and he doesn't play good defense and he doesn't shoot well. And so I just think there's too many negatives to the positives. I like Marvin Bagley, but not at the cost of preventing us from getting someone like Jalen Brunson or another big name free agent that we have to pay big money for. So I think it depends on how we work that restricted contract um, and things like that. So that's my number five. My number four most uh, realistic restricted free agent is Nick Claxton. And this is a guy, uh, a center, 6'11", lanky, that I think does a lot of the things that Bagley does, but I'm not sure he's going to command the same price tag. Um, He is an absolute garbage bucket getter. He's a good rebounder. Um, He is a good pick and roll threat. He's jumpy. He's lengthy. Um, He does. He's much better defensively than Bagley is. So in many ways, he's an improved version of Bagley, but the dude has no outside game. None. He's not going to be a mid range jump shot guy. He's not going to be a three point jump shot guy. He's 58% from uh free throw from free throws but i want you to see this in 21 minutes a game he's shooting 67.4 percent from the floor it helps when you have a lot of dunks he's only 58 percent from the line he's averaging 5.6 boards and 1.1 blocks when you uh take that over 30 minutes the dude is a very good rim protector and i think with extended time you could see him really develop into a big that is a good pick and roll threat on the offensive end and really good defensively. He already is good defensively. So I think that's a, that could be a good player. All right. Number three, we get into the big names. We start getting into the bigger names and the much bigger contract. Number three is Colin Sexton. Um, And I'm going to go back two years for his stats because last year he was hurt after 11 games. He really didn't play much. He is undervalued right now. And it seems like the Cavs don't want him. At least that's the national perspective because Garland just popped off for them as soon as he was gone. I don't think that that necessarily means Sexton is bad. It just means that he has to accept a different role. He might not be the primary point guard, and he wouldn't be that in Detroit. He would be playing off guard to Cade Cunningham. But I want you to listen to these numbers. 24.3 points, 4.4 assists, 47.5% from the field, 37% from downtown, 81.5% from the strike. The dude is a walking bucket. Do we need that on our offense? Is he willing to play off guard? Is he willing to not have the ball in his hands all the time and embrace that role? Maybe even be the guy who sticks in there with the backup unit and runs the show from that. I think he could be very effective in that role. He's not big. He's 6'1", 190 pounds, but he's fast. He's quick. I think he can. He's not bad as an on-ball defender. He's not good as an off-ball defender. So I do worry about that point in his game, but he might be even more affordable than a guy like Jalen Brunson. So I think we need to look at that as, hey, the Cavs might be willing to part ways, Um, but it might be harder because it's in the division and they don't want to see him over and over again. All right, number two, I debated, do I put him on here? Don't I put him on here? What does it look like? And it's Anthony Simons of Portland Trailblazers because I said realistic, and I don't know how realistic it is that Portland parts ways with him. About the only way I could see this happening is we give him a large offer in restrictive free agency, and it ends up being a sign and trade with Jeremy Grant. Helps with the cap room for them. 
but also uh, gives them a good player in return. And then they can use that eight number eight pick to get another player that they feel goes well with Lillard. The only reason I think this might work is because the Trailblazers have been here before. They've tried this exper experiment with um, CJ McCallum and Damian Lillard, where you have two good guards, but nothing else that's elite in any way, shape, or form. So they might be saying to themselves, we don't want to just run it back again with Anthony Simons and do something similar. We want to start over and keep Dame happy. I don't know what Dame Lillard is thinking. So what I know is that he's going to have a, a big opinion on it, <laughs> but I don't know what that looks like. And I know that they want to continue building around Lillard. So I put him at number two, just because I think he's not as stuck there as everybody might think, just because, They've been there. They've done that. All right. Now for the number one realistic restricted free agent, which is also the number one free agent period is DeAndre Ayton. And I don't understand why this one's realistic, but everybody seems to think it is. And everybody thinks that we can have a chance if we give a max contract, the Suns might not keep them around. I don't get it. I know they have a ton of money into a few different players. I know Chris Paul, Devin Booker have a ton of money coming their way. I know they paid bridges, which is interesting to me. I would have much rather paid Aiden, but I think this guy is the truth. And I'm sure I'll do another video at some point, just breaking down why Aiden is so unbelievably good. But this is a guy that is 17.2 points a game, 10 boards, 63 and a half percent from the field. Um, 36.8% from three on one attempt every three games. So that's not legit. 75% from the line and almost a block a game. The guy can, he can play and he is the best of all worlds. He's like, if you take Marvin Bagley and combine him and combine him with um, somebody like Isaiah Stewart. And it's like, he can switch on defense. He's a good rim protector. He's doing all these things. And you realize like, wow. That guy is good. Here's something else that you might not know about DeAndre Ayton. Um, he is second highest true shooting percentage in the league at 65.6%. That trails only the recently named MVP, Nikola Jokic. The guy can flat play. And I think if he has the ability to have a number two role on a team, he throws over 20 points a game. And all of a sudden you're like, this guy is no doubt a top five center in the league. He's already close but he would become a no doubt top five center in the league and a guy that I desperately want on this team. I would give up a lot for Deandre and I'm just going to tell you that right now. So let me know what you think. Are they realistic? Um, this is what media is saying is realistic. So that's kind of what I'm going with here. I don't know if Aiton's realistic because it just seems crazy to me that the Suns would allow a guy like this walk. Uh, maybe there's a sign in trade where we give something back. Jeremy Grant, Isaiah Stewart. I don't know. Uh, you never know. The sign and trade thing is always confusing and I never really know what's going on, but Hey, if you're here, uh, you must like it a little bit. What we're doing, hit that subscribe button below. Would love to have you part of this community. Leave a comment. Let us know how we're doing. Uh, only nice things, right? Go Pistons.